Trochanteric bursitis is inflammation of the greater trochanteric bursa. This bursa normally minimizes the friction between the greater trochanter and the iliotibial band, which passes over the bursa. Bursal inflammation may be caused by several conditions, such as chronic microtrauma, arthritis, regional muscle dysfunction, overuse injuries, and acute injuries. The gluteus maximus is the largest of three gluteal muscles of the buttock. This muscle spans the side of the hip together with the tensor fascia latae before joining on to become the iliotibial band. The iliotibial band is a long tendon that passes over the trochanteric bursa on the outside of the greater trochanter. It runs down the side of the thigh and attaches to the anterolateral aspect of the tibia. Walking causes the gluteus maximus and tensor fasciae lata to pull on the iliotibial band. If the tendon is tight, it will start to press and rub against the greater trochanteric bursa, leading to bursitis, inflammation of the bursa. The trochanteric bursa is the most commonly affected bursa in the hip and groin region. However, other bursa that can be inflamed also include the ischiogluteal and the iliopectineal bursa, also known as the iliopsoas bursa. Predisposing factors for trochanteric bursitis include broad pelvis, specifically female runners, training on banked surfaces or roads with a slope, and a recent increase in mileage, duration, or intensity of training. So this is talking about overuse injury. Of course, osteoarthritis of the hip region, as well as an acute injury such as a fall or an accident involving that region can also predispose one to trochanteric bursitis. On history and examination, the patient normally complains of lateral hip pain. Occasionally, the pain radiates along the distal lateral aspect of the thigh. This is sometimes referred to as pseudo-radiculopathy. The pain itself on the lateral hip may be associated with a snapping or clicking sensation. There is point tenderness over the greater trochanter. On history and examination, there is pain at the extremes of hip rotation, abduction, or adduction. There is pain on contraction of the hip abductors against resistance. Provocative positions, things that induce the pain, include external rotation of the hip joint and adduction of the hip joint. Differential diagnoses to consider include stress fracture within the area, gluteus medius tendinopathy, which are usually in dances, lumbosacral radiculopathy, avascular necrosis, osteoarthritis, and septic bursitis. The diagnosis of trochanteric bursitis is made on clinical examination. However, an ultrasound and an MRI may help to rule out other differential diagnoses. In terms of treatment, most patients improve with conservative management, which includes rest, iliotibial band and tensor fascia lata stretching, gluteal muscle stretching and strengthening, and the use of anti-inflammatory drugs, such as ibuprofen. Other therapies include iontophoresis, a medical device that delivers mild electrical current to the affected area, extracorporeal shockwave therapy, injection of local anesthetic into the point of maximal tenderness, and surgery, 
which include an iliotibial band release, as well as the bursa being actually removed. Now, importantly, one of the differentials mentioned is septic bursitis, which is really infection of the bursa. Clinically, the patient also presents with fevers and looks possibly systemically unwell. To treat septic bursitis, aspiration and identification of the organism is important. Repeated aspirations may be needed. Antibiotic therapy, either intravenous or oral, is then required. Other options, if not responding well to these treatments, include surgical lavage and debridement. This is mainly indicated if aspiration has not completely drained the bursa, there's an abscess actually present, or a sinus has formed. So in summary, trochanteric bursitis is inflammation of the greater trochanteric bursa, which lies over the greater trochanter of the femur. There are many causes, including chronic microtrauma, overuse injury, and regional muscle dysfunction. Treatment is usually conservative and includes rest, use of anti-inflammatory drugs, and stretching and strengthening the area. Thank you for watching.